what's going on? So today I want to open up about something that maybe you've heard of this company um, and it's called Real Social Dynamics, RSD. And if you're not aware of what it is, then basically over the past decade or so, over the past actually 15 years, um, it's a company that started kind of like a pickup artist company and it gradually grew into a self-development company. And for those of you that know RSD, then you probably know all about it. Um, I'm going to talk about my experience working for RSD. I worked for RSD for a couple of years and some of the craziest, most interesting part of my life the life experiences happened during that time. And basically, uh, the backstory behind this is around the time I was 23, um, I was a late bloomer, still a virgin, and I was really looking to change my life. Um, because I went to a Mormon school, I was pretty religious growing up, and I always had this intention of waiting until marriage to uh, to basically lose my virginity, but I had a change of heart before that. And I decided to, um, well, I started researching online and I found RSD. And so I basically binge watched all these videos from RSD Tyler. And, um, and then I started going out, basically meaning that I would go out, talk to girls, try to improve my social skills because I was really shy and introverted growing up. Uh, throughout high school, I barely talked. Throughout my whole childhood, I barely talked. I was voted the quietest kid in school in the eighth grade. And yeah, I was just a really shy kid. Um, so I was trying to break out of that. So around the time I was 23, I started going out to bars and nightclubs to try to improve my social skills. I didn't really drink that much, but I still tried to go out and talk to, uh, talk to girls to get over that, that anxiety. And so I found RSD and long story short, I basically continued to go out. I became really committed and I ended up moving to Las Vegas to do their immersion program, which is basically a month of going out and receiving instruction from one of their instructors and you work closely with them. So I did that for a month. And I was lucky enough to actually have to befriend one of the guys who was really good with girls and so he got the attention of the instructor he was promoted to coach but he also said i really want marcus to be a coach with me so he or he wanted mark he wanted me to be a coach in the program so um so basically he talked to the instructor and this instructor gave me a week-long trial i hustled super hard during that week i basically took on any responsibility that i could from filming to to editing, um, to chauffeuring people around, whatever I could do, you know, running errands. I even had to go to Target one time to get the instructor bed sheets. <laughs> so it was literally anything I could do. I was sleeping uh, anywhere between one to three hours a night during that time. And I actually was able to make it uh, to become part of the staff at RSD. And I really worked hard that summer to do my best uh, to be a coach, even though I, I wasn't super experienced with girls. Um, I believe that the instructor, and by the way, if, uh, if you're familiar with RSD, when I went to immersion, I was, uh, the instructor who was there was Max and halfway through Todd came in, uh, actually Todd was the one who started the immersion program. Max took his place for one month while Todd was traveling and then Todd came back and Todd was the one that, um, that brought me into the program. and. So I was super grateful for that opportunity. Uh, I continued to stay there for six months and then I went to grad school in London and then came back uh, to Immersion. And let me tell you about some of the experiences that I had working with RSD because I basically met almost all of the instructors. I worked with uh, Todd and Max. I worked with Luke. I worked with Madison and after the immersion program, I worked with Owen at one point as well. So, so yeah, that was basically the timeline of what happened. 
um, in terms of my actual experience. So it's, it was interesting. So definitely I'm grateful for the opportunity that I had to be able to be part of um, the immersion program because I learned so much and the people that I met. So this is the number one main benefit of my experience was the people. The network was incredible because for some reason, RSD attracts a very cerebral type of person, deep thinkers, and people who are just interested in um, philosophical topics. So I found that a lot of them were very entrepreneurial. A lot of them were very successful, especially ones that came into the immersion program because they would have to take a month off to do the program. So I met some of the most incredible entrepreneurs. I didn't really realize it at the time, but looking back on it, it was a very highly qualified group of people in that program. Now, some of the drawbacks on the other hand, and I'm gonna tread carefully as I, as I speak about this, but um, let me put it this way. So at the time when I was working there, and I can't speak, of, speak um, about how it is now to work there because I no longer work there. It's been a couple of years, but when I was there, it felt like a startup, constantly like a startup. It's basically churning out, um, churning through interns, right? Unpaid interns. So a lot of times uh, we just had people coming in because the thing is people who are followers of RSD are like super committed. They're, they're very dogmatically invested into the culture of RSD. Um, it's almost like a cult-like following. So hence the word culture. So I was one of those people. I was super into it. You know, I had the whole success story, um, the whole rags to riches in the context of dating sort of story. And I was just like, whatever I'm, I can, I have to do, I'm going to do it. You know, one sleeping one to three hours a night. So basically on day to day, I would, uh, I would go to training at around 12 o'clock. Um, and then I would attend training. I was also working at the time, so I had to balance work. And then I would go out at night because that's what basically what we did was we would go out around 10 o'clock in the evening and then we would stay out until around four to uh, 5 a.m. And then we would do a debrief after that until about 6 a.m. And then at that point I would go to bed around 6.30 a.m. And usually I woke up around 9 a.m. so I could edit the videos in time for training. So that was basically my my weekly routine. And to say the least, I was exhausted for this first six months that I worked there. But at the same time, I was grateful for it because it gave me a range of experiences that I never would have had. The most crazy stories, meeting some really interesting people. And yeah, it really broadened my horizons in terms of my life. Um, yeah, not a lot of people get to go to a nightclub seven nights a week for a couple of years, right? That just seems like a crazy lifestyle. And I ended up becoming, you know, one of the the main coaches there. And then I also became a nightclub promoter at one of the top nightclubs in Vegas. So it's just a matter of sticking with it. And the hard work did pay off, but it really burnt me out too. So I ended up leaving and I moved to Thailand and did a meditation retreat and decompressed and started to work online and totally changed routes because I was just really tired of it. Um, but for the couple of years that I was there, it was, a, it was a really interesting experience. There were some ups and downs. Going back to the drawbacks, so like I said, kind of run like a startup. Um, for me, there were times where I just felt overworked and I, would, I, just, I wasn't even getting paid most of the time. Um, for the first six months, I really wasn't getting paid at all. So even though I was staying out until around 6 a.m., I was compensated nothing. Like I, I wasn't really getting paid. And yeah, there was there's like a lot of political stuff going on with the, within the company. And I know that what I can say is I, I spoke about how Todd was the one running the program and he really did look after us in terms of he wanted us to get paid, but the structure of the company didn't really allow for that to happen. So it is what it is. Um, and it's just the way that it was running at the time. I don't know if things have changed, but uh, 
you know, at the time that I was there, it was just like people would burn out after three months. Because imagine, you know, you're not getting paid for three months, you're living in an apartment, and at the time we were just, it was a lot of people packed into one apartment.、Um, And so I understand things were just starting up in the program, but it would literally be like six coaches in a two bedroom apartment. So it was really packed tight. And especially, I don't know if you've ever roomed with these pickup or RSD guys, but especially when they have girls coming in and out of the apartment, it gets really crazy. And it was just basically like an after party every night. So it would just be like, a, Almost like a disaster zone. It was really scary.、Um, so, I don't want to talk too much about the details, but let me just say this that it got to the point where it was not really ha- inhabitable.、Um, I, I wasn't living there personally. I would kind of visit that apartment. I had my own apartment off the strip. So, I was grateful for that.、Um, but the one that the that people working at RSD stayed at wasn't in the best condition.、Um, And yeah, I, I really felt like because RSD knows that it could just bring in more people at any time,、um, they could just burn people out with a bunch of work for very little pay or no pay at all. And they would just churn through unpaid interns like crazy because there's literally like an unlimited. Amount of people willing to work at RSD for free just because of the, the marketing. And I will say this too that meeting the instructors,、um, it got to the point where once I got to see behind the scenes, it took away a little bit of that, that charm of the videos. Because if you just watch and binge watch videos, if, especially if you've seen RSD videos, you'll probably understand what I'm saying is. You start to put them on a pedestal, like they're the Marvel superheroes. Like they're these incredible, untouchable people. And when, they're, when they go out, they're just like shooting laser beams out of their wrists or whatever. And for me, when I actually met them in person, I started to realize okay, these are just regular people. They're just regular people who are very, very good at marketing. And、um, yeah, they are good with women, but honestly, nothing too crazy or mind blowing. Um, and that was a realization where I started to depart from watching so many RSD videos after I had that realization, especially when I was behind the camera or in the editing room, editing the videos. I started to realize a lot of this is really just. I don't know if you know, like The Wizard of Oz, but that was like kind of the effect. was... A lot of it was incredible to watch, and I think the message is great and can be as inspiring for a lot of people. But in terms of actually seeing you know, behind the scenes, it takes away a little bit of that, that magic or romanticism.、Um, that being said, really grateful for the, for the experience, and a lot of the instructors are, are great guys.、Um, but that was basically my experience.、I、had some ups and downs. <laughs> And yeah,、um, but really interesting times. And a lot of the people that I met during that time are still good friends.、Um, so, yeah, that's all I have to say for now. Maybe I'll make a follow up video. I'm thinking about making some follow up videos about working with each instructor and what that was like. So, stay tuned for that, and we'll talk soon.